Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another TLT edition of Super Coach Off the Bench. Uh, I'm your host, Ross, coach of Bench Warmers. Tonight, we are joined by a special guest. We've got Dan from NL Tragics, who is absolutely flying, sitting in about 338th at the moment. Is that correct, Dan? Yeah, pretty, pretty good season for me so far. Um, even with a pretty average round, I was surprised to go up a few spots, but... um. Yeah, no, in the right spot. So just gonna try to play it safe and maybe start saving trades. I think. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I think I'm down to about 27 trades now, and like one boost left or something like that. So, um, mm. I think if you're set now for like round 13 and stuff like that, I think now's the time to try and preserve some of these trades. But um, yeah, I'm with you, Dan. I thought it was a crazy round. Like I, I got a 12.99, and that moved me up like 9,000 spots, and I was not expecting that at all. Like that's that's a big move. So, um, yeah, I was very surprised when I saw it open and saw that. So, mm. But hopefully we can both keep it going and get some of the others up there, Glenny and the other boys from off the bench up there as well. And um, hopefully we can get a couple of us in the top thousand, at least anyway. Yeah, you know, I don't mind um, winning the best overall score in your comp every single now and then as well. It's pretty helpful. So. <laughs> <laughs> How's those bonus bets going? All right. Yeah, pretty good. I actually, uh, I use, I split the bonus bet up uh, last week, and I managed to get deal bags on first try scorer, so it got me a sweet little ninety bucks right there, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> so... Nice, nice, nice little profit, nice little ninety dollar profit. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had my, I had my, I got my first win this week too. Well, a bonus bet wise, because I got the highest this week and off the bench. So, um, nice. Hopefully, I can use that, make that use up in Magic Round this weekend. So. Oh, yeah. See what we can do. Anyway, all right, we'll go through the teams quickly. So, first game is Bulldogs versus Raiders. Uh, for the Bulldogs, um, their their run of outs just keep continuing. Braden Burns is out, but they get Karaz back, which obviously is a big in for them. Uh, Max King returns from injuries. Harrison Edwards dropping out. Franklin Pele comes onto the bench, and for the Raiders, um, we'll go we'll go over this in a second. But Savage replaces Alvin Hopewadi on the wing, and Atea Murray Toa. Replaces DMH on the interchange bench. Um, obviously, good news for those who bought in Croker early, Dan. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it, done it. I was too scared. Uh, I, 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 I love the bloke. I reckon he's um, he deserves it to be three hundred, and I was really hoping he would. And but I just don't know if Ricky was going to be that guy that just to give him the three hundredth game or to sacrifice wins or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm glad he's getting more runs, which is good. And I'm unfortunately I missed out. So. Yeah, well, I made it. I'm going to bring him in this week. I was happy to risk, you know, get, you know, get him going up 60k rather than bring him in last week. And then Savage comes in for him, and then you know, I've got 300k enough sitting there doing nothing that I don't want in my team. Mm. Um, so yeah, but anyway, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, he's got the goal kicking too, which obviously helps as well for those. Um, he's been scoring okay. I think he put out a 70 on the weekend. So yeah, um, even even when he's not scoring tries, he's getting like. 38 in base. I know it, was, it helps with the kicking as well, but that's still pretty safe um, for, for that for the price range as well. Mm. Like it's pretty safe. Um, I, I just couldn't do it because of the job security, but um, seems to be doing all right. So yeah, I don't I don't have hold the grudge to get anyone like myself bringing him in this week either. I still think he's got cash to be made. I think he's got a break even of minus eight as well. So yeah, still cash there to be made. All right, we'll move on to the next game: Manly versus Broncos because we've got a few. Changes to go through here. So, Turbo comes back into the side. K.O. Weeks drops it to the reserves. Uh, Gerbo's out with a in- uh, calf injury. Found out today he's out for a month. So, mm. that's a big loss. For, huge loss for Manly. Yeah. I mean, massive, like, really is. Um, Sean Kepi comes in the starting side. Ruben Garrick moves back to the wing. Thank goodness for that. Um, and Ko- Koala comes back into the side um, in the centre. Brad Parker's is a big inclusion too for Manly as well, I reckon, with Morgan Harper dropping out. And Aaron Woods and Ben Trebovich come onto the bench. And for the Broncos, they've got their two big backs in. Hey, Payne Haas comes back from suspension. Keenan Palacia drops back to the bench. Ezra Mam returns from suspension. Doc Madden dropping out. Um, Dan, obviously some big ins there for Manly. Yeah, um, honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing how Manly go um, with uh, not just like the um, turbo back, like with... But Cooler as well. He's been him and uh, he's on Saab side, and they work really well together. Those two boys. Um, I think. Um, and and they're not only that Broncos as well. Like Broncos have been a bit of a downfall as well for the last few weeks because they've had a uh, they they lost the last two. I'm pretty sure. Um, and last week they were missing those players. These two teams that can on their day put it on. 
and they're both welcoming back some very important players. So it's going to be a pretty good clash, I think. Yeah, I think I saw Tupolotu, is it? He's on the extended bench too, so he'd be a massive win for them too and obviously come in for Saab if he does come into the team. Yeah, my, my concern there is whether um, Turbo is ready and they can always put, um, say, Tupolotu can go onto the wing, put Garrick to fullback, which... Um, obviously, I don't I don't have Turbo anymore. I got rid of him last week. But um, for those that own, just be be mindful there. Yeah, I thought I've got to say I know you're a Gary owner too, aren't you? Yeah. Um, I thought that you know, given the where the game was at last week against the Titans, that they would have moved Gary to fullback at halftime in that game. Mm. Um, but obviously they didn't do that. He, yeah, I was just I don't know what Seabolt's doing there. Sometimes I really. I was... thought, I was getting really hopeful, actually, because um, I saw towards the end of the game, um, he was on the other side of the field, and I was like, oh, maybe he's gone to fullback, but then he went back to his centre again. Um, towards the end of the game, he was like, started to swoop around and do what Manu did um, when he plays and does that roaming role. But then, like, five minutes later, it's uh, five minutes to go in the game, and he's back on his centre spot. So I was got me hopes up for no reason. Well, I was I was hoping for the double win, because if they had to move weeks to centers, I'm pretty sure he would have been marking up against Fafita too, wouldn't he? So, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Fafita might have ended up getting 200 if that was the case, and Garrick might have got some more points too. So Yeah, I think weeks would have been uh, probably less uh, effective as a speed hump. For... <laughs> so, so I, think that, I, think that happened, I think that happened last game when they put him in the centers all in the wing last game too. I don't think yeah. they're going to make that mistake again. <laughs> Anyway, I'll move on to the next game. It's Warriors versus your Panthers, Dan. Um, for the Warriors, Toe Harris is back in already. Interesting um, mm. to see. Uh, so Josh Curran drops back to the bench. Jet CNK returns from concussion. Uh, Freddie Luxon drops out for the Panthers. I think this is a big in for them. Jay, James Fixture Harris is back in. Yep. And that'll Maybe. that'll certainly tighten up that middle section. Uh, Matt Austin Hooth is out injured. Um, I guess we can't really take too much out of the game last Saturday night. I didn't see it. I watched the, the um, replay the next game because I was at a party, but um, Panthers, like they, they certainly didn't suit those conditions, did they? It was a tough, tough I don't know. Play. I'm not sure what it is. It's like as soon as it starts raining, they start getting, it's like the opposite effect of what Hines has when it rains if he plays better. Um, But honestly, I'm not taking anything away from what the Tigers did. Mm. Uh, I said it on the Tragics podcast last week that uh, I think Glenn, um, one of our boys at Tragics there, mentioned that the Tigers may be one of those teams that actually starts to show a bit of form later uh, towards the end of the year. You know, and, I, and I thought it, even though they lost the week before, they were starting to show it. Um, their attack was a bit more flamboyant. They were going around and doing some uh, more set plays. And it really stuck together quite well. I think Panthers are really good when it comes to dealing with structured play. And the and the Tigers, they they was doing runarounds. They were doing uh, some really great set plays. And I don't want to take anything away from the Tigers did because Panthers, we didn't play that great, but Tigers, they just put it on us. Yeah, I mean, we were probably probably pretty unlucky. We should have probably beaten Manly and Eels too. So yeah. I guess we weren't far off from that win. And I mean, I'm happy that they won. I was hoping they'd be see their first win against the Dragons in Magic Round this weekend. But uh, mm. hopefully we can see there's two wins in a row. So, But um, as a Panthers fan, I wouldn't be too disheartened by that. I know that there's a few... People out there panicking about trading certain players out because of it. Um, I guess I guess we'll we'll talk about that when we get through the trade trends anyway. Um, mm. All right, moving on to the next game: Sharks versus Dolphins for the Sharks. Um, Hamuel and like ULE is out um, for four weeks. Roy Hunt comes in the starting side. Dolphin Kane comes back from injury. Cam McKinnis dropping back to the bench. And for the Dolphins, Tessie New comes into the side with uh, Robert the Trap. I call him the Trap Jennings. Mm-hmm. Um, dropping out and Ray Stone's out with concussion and Milford and Mason T come onto the bench. Um, I don't know if you guys mentioned it on your pod last week or not, but I did mention the people to not jump on Robert Jennings because obviously testing you was due back. Um, yeah, it was a it was a bit of a crazy trading. I know yeah. it's probably people oh. doing it's downgrade for cash so. Yeah, no, I, I I did I did the same thing for Dunster, and I regret that decision ever since. So, um, and I, I, that's not, nothing against Dunster. I think he's just not getting the ball. Um, I think he's uh very much the similar position to what Staines was, where he just hangs on the edge and doesn't. And then, yeah, there was that replay I saw on um one of the replays in the game where uh, Panasini makes that break and almost gets the try. Gutho gets to play the ball and gets the try eventually anyway. But Dunster was just lagging behind, and I. Everyone was bagging at Dunstan for not supporting, but 
he's probably just used to not getting any passes from from Panasonic. He just wants to do a bit of hogging and stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not selling Dunster um, purely because he could play in round 13 and he hasn't made any money, so I can't sell him then anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, when it comes to um, Jennings, I, I I couldn't do the same mistake twice. I got yeah. I got Dunster vibes all over that, and I was like, no, not not happening. Well, we'll talk about him when we go to get to the para teams. Um, all right, so uh, the next game is Storm versus South. Um, for me, this is probably the game of the round. Um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to watching this game live. I like really am. Like I think I think they played each other round six or round five, and I think the Storm got them in a tight one. Um, mm-hmm. And South haven't lost since. So I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, so for Storm, they've got no changes. Obviously, they had to buy last week. At least Matawa, I believe, has been cleared to play after his concussion. Um, because it wasn't a cat one, so he's yeah. Was, I remember hearing it was reported as a cat two in the game, so yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing dodgy there. Yeah, uh, Liam Knight replaces David Mowali on the interchange bench. Um, I don't think there's too much to talk about here, right? Dan is there for this game. I mean, obviously, the fact that we're looking forward to this one, I think. Yeah, I, I, I would be surprised if there's many points. Like, when it comes, I reckon this is going to be a very solid game, and it might be a bit of a worry when it comes to getting super coach points from this game. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be needing to rely on the players that have high base. Yeah, I think I've only got, and I don't, I've, pro, I've got, I've got um, Latrell, um, Storm, I've got Warwick, but I'm probably not going to play him in this matchup. I just think there's probably 10 points there. If I want him on offer, but I think I'm going to pass on that. But um, I think it's going to be a slugfest. And I think someone like a Harry Grant, if you've still got him, um, should score, might score well this game. Yeah. Um, maybe like Damien Cook might score well too. Um, I just don't think it's going to be a very high scoring game this one. I, I do I do like the Harry Grant call out because I think um, one thing, that, especially with Liam um, Knight back, um, big, big forward there. And I think Harry Grant will take advantage of that close to the line. Yeah. All right, next game is my Tigers versus the Dragons. For the Tigers, Brent Naden is out suspended, replaced by Tommy Talao. And Asa Kapoa comes onto the bench. And for the Dragons, Zach Lomax has been dropped with uh, Ravalava coming back from injury. Uh, Michael Molo drops back to the bench with Jack DeBenham named at prop. Jaden Sewer comes into the starting with Jack Bird moving to lock. Billy Burns into the side with BMM moving back to the bench. Jacob Little and Toby Crouchman have both been dropped. Um, Hooks pulled some changes. Are you surprised at all by Lomax? I know his goal kicking hasn't been great, but I think he's probably been a bit unlucky. You know, one, one thing I also, and I said, I was talking to Broad earlier today about this because Broad um, unfortunately has Lomax as a pod. He was bringing him in for the pod, and I thought uh, I knew one hasn't been doing very well for him, but he'd be a pretty handy one to have in the buy period. But you got to say, like, think of, from the coach's perspective, you got to think he moves him to the other side of the field where he's not comfortable. And if he's not performing, whose fault is that? To me, that's the coach's fault. And I hate to say that because I, I, I believe that if he was on the other side, he'd be getting try assist after try assist after try assist. And he'd be a perfect person to have in your super coach team. Kick goal, kicking goals too. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm confused by that. And I think he's realized he's made a mistake and now he's trying to cover his losses. I think it's... Uh... You hear mixed reports like going around in the groups and stuff like that. Dan, no, one one was that they he'd been dropped because of his goal kicking. Yes, he's only kicking at sixty percent, but then they've lost three claims that have been pretty close. But you can't put that surely on to Lomax. No, and like you got to think as well. Um, who's going to kick now? Who who kicks in that? Well, team? that's what I was wondering. Is it going to be ben, <laughs> ben Hunt or is it going to be Tau Tau? Someone, I think someone said one of the Fee Guy brothers. Maybe I've never seen. I, don't, I wouldn't have a clue, eh? Yeah, that's just strange. Let's, I mean. let's just let Blake Laurie kick goals, Ooh. eh? I'll bring yeah, well, I was about to say, he's doing everything else, man, all year. <laughs> might as well give it to him. Oh, I, love, I love me some Laurie. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, no, nah, look, I, I I don't know what to say about that one on Lomax. I mean, I thought he was pretty solid on the weekend, to be honest with you, and the team that got beaten by the dogs. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, that's for sure. So, yeah. Um, Anything else you want to touch on this game? What do we think? Do we think this is going to be a tight one or can we see it being a high-scoring game? Um, I reckon it's going to be a pretty high-scoring game. I can see um, the Tigers do have lapses in defence, but they've been attacking quite nicely. Um, and I, I think there's going to be some points. put. I reckon Tigers win this comfortably, but I reckon it'd be like a 34 to, say, 20 scoreline. So, 
I'd like to say that it'll depend on whether Luke Brooks can back up probably his best game in a long time last week again. Mate, he's so, much, so again, much potential for so much potential, mate. So much potential. If, if he can do that again, then I think you're right. I think it, I think we can absolutely bliss them. Honestly, yep. so, he's starting because I noticed the last few weeks he's been starting to do his running game more, and that yeah. has been more effective. So um, that's why I think if he keeps doing that, it'll be he'll be he'll be heading in the right direction. Yeah. All right. Next one's uh, Roosters versus the Cowboys for the Roosters. Paul Morosky's out injured, uh, replaced by Drew Hutchinson. JWH comes back in the side after rest last week with Matt Lodge moving back to the bench. Jake Turbin comes onto the bench and Fletcher Baker drops out for the Cowboys. Halimi Luki returns from injury, placing Nano, who's out suspended, and Tom Chester is out injured. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this bloke's name who's replaced him on the bench. I Kula Kirefu find effect. I'm not even going to try this damn dead set. I, I, I cannot pronounce that. But they're 4K. That sounds right. <laughs> That's my goal with it anyway. Try to get it raw for time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we stick with that. Um, yeah. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Um, are you a Manu owner? Mate, honestly, that's what I was going to ask. If he plays this game, all 5-8, does he get Jules status moving forward? Because if he is, I'm bloody loving life. <laughs> well, I think um, I watched the um, the Supercoach pod earlier with um, Sandstorm. And they were talking about a couple of players that could potentially get um, dual position for round 12. He was one of them. Mm. And I believe Kyron Peachy was the other one as well. So um, what's your, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. So you've got Hutchinson and, and uh, Corey Allen into the team. You've got Sam Walker on an extended bench. Can you see the possibility of Sam Walker coming in and only going back to centres at all? Uh, it's definitely a possibility, but I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I think that they've seen Hutchinson, what he can do on the centres. He's been doing a solid job when he's playing. Mm. There. So I think they don't, they don't need to worry about that too much. Um, it all depends on um, how the coach is feeling about Sam Walker. Um, it's nothing to do with the players that are in the starting team. It's about how the coach, how Robson's feeling about um, about how Sam Walker was progressing because that was the reason why he dropped him. He wanted to get some more game time, get some more um, free flowing games or whatever, and then move him on back onto the field again. And when and honestly, if he when he does get that starting role again, Sam Walker, he did this a couple of years back. I think it was last year, I think maybe, and he got dropped, came back, and went mental. So it's just a good one to watch for there. Uh, but I don't see it changing. I think um, give him a, another few more weeks, I reckon. I think um, I think he's been hard, hard done by. I was having a chat with Brian about this earlier. I just think that can't really put it all on him. Um, but coach has made a decision and um, we'll just move on. Um, I'm interested in Luke, your thoughts on Luki. I want to have a look at him this week. But with uh, Nanai out for four weeks, uh, he plays round 13. What's your thoughts on Luki? Um, not too excited about Lukey. Um, I think we've had him at the start of last year. He was one of the options we could have and he wasn't ideal. Um, but one thing I will say is the fact that Nanai has gone for four weeks, made my Gajewski trade a couple of weeks back feel worth it. <laughs> so I'm very grateful that I got to have Gajewski in there, but I, I'm not, I'm not for Lukey. Um, I'll, it's his first game back. We can have a little check and see how he goes. Um, but there's not many points coming from that edge. Have you noticed that even Nanai mm-hmm. is getting bugger all points? I know Nanai is more of an attacking, relies on attacking stats, but I think um, Luke is a bit more solid in base, I believe. So, yeah. All right. Last game of the round is Titans versus Eels. I can dead set see this being a very high scoring game. Um, so for the Titans, AJ Brimson's out injured with Jaden Campbell starting fullback. Cruz Lemming comes onto the bench. For the Eels, Maddo returns from illness via the interchange bench and Andrew Davey comes straight into the side after signing from the Dogs with Cardi dropping back to the bench and Bailey Simpson returns from concussion. Now, this is what I want to talk about. Sean Russell's been dropped out and not done stuff. What is your thought? I, I know you won't done stuff and I know he hasn't had much opportunity because we know Penicillin doesn't like to pass the ball. Were you a bit surprised by that, that one? But honestly, I, I always thought uh, Russell was ahead of him in the pecking order f- for the preseason before he got injured. So yeah, definitely surprised by it. Um, I'm not, I think um, someone was talking before on one of the group chats about we don't see what happens behind the doors at training, whether he could be training the house down and looking really good, impressing the coach, and maybe Russell isn't doing so much in that same aspect. That's all I can think of. Um, but I always thought Russell was ahead of the game, but. Maybe he sees Russell as a potential centre future in moving forward. 
rather than a winger. Uh, and that's why they think Dunster might be more of a winger. That could be the reason behind that. Yeah, you might be right on there too. And I know that they just re-signed Russell for another three years too. So, um, but I, I think Russell's more of a of a, of a winger than a center. But um, yeah, I totally agree. I think he's, look, he's a, he knows how to find the try line. Yeah. All right, we'll grab, we'll just have a quick look at the trade in and trade out. So number one on the list is Reese Walsh. Um, would you be with with mainly the way they're playing at the moment, the fact that Jerbo is out? Would you be selling him? I know he's already dumped like heap of cash in the last few weeks, but would you be tempted to hold? Well, I think uh, with with Reese Walsh, like I, I, I'd be tempted to hold. The reason behind that is because we don't know he's making that Origin side. Broncos play around 13. He's already lost a ton of cash. And the only real standout in the fullback position is Latrell Mitchell. There's no one else is really showing that we have to have them. Yeah. So if you've got Latrell Mitchell and Reese Walsh, I can see a world where I'd, especially like maybe last week I would have sold him. Um, but this week, he's already lost a bit of cash. Uh, I'll probably hold this week just to see about any kind of news on the Origin teams, whether he makes the team. If he doesn't make Origin, then you have a great number in round th- round thirteen as well. I I agree. Uh, number two on the list is Turbo. Um, yeah, I guess it's one of those things. I mean, I sold him last week. Um, would you be selling him this week? Um, he's he's named, but obviously we don't know if he's going to be hundred uh, percent. We saw that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, honestly, with him, we uh, more than likely is playing Origin. You got to think if he's healthy, he's playing yeah. Origin. So I would be moving him on, um, just because the first few games he was running like he was getting lucky with some attacking stats, but he wasn't looking good still, and yeah. he's he hasn't looked his best. He's been getting those points at the start of the season, but he hasn't been looking that good. I think um, I would hold off on on I, I would get rid of him, and I reckon towards the end of the season, maybe a bit more game, a bit more strength in his hamstrings and his quads. Uh, and he might be a good little run home pickup. Yeah, I, I agree, and I I wouldn't behold anyone who's doing turbo to Gutho. I think that's a really good trade. That's to so, me, that's a good trade. But there's all that yeah. news about Gutho potentially um <laughs> vying for that <laughs> jersey no, as well. Please, Origin, please, he's probably sixth in line for the fullback position. He's prob- isn't he? probably having a beer at the pub with uh, Jared <laughs> Croker, just going, oh, one day it'll be my turn. <laughs> we 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 uh. We, we might we, we might actually have to play some players in their proper position and not play them in centres. <laughs> well, in saying that, um, Gutho, I remember when Gutho was, was it Manly. He was played Origin. For... He played Origin in centres, didn't he? At yeah. one stage. Yeah, but Gutho was a, a centre at Manly for a little That's bit as correct. well. He was yeah. um, and he was a quality centre, but he got um, they wanted to give him more ball because he was ahead of that attacking player. That's why I put him at fullback and in five eight a few times as well. So, yeah, number three on the list is Nathan Cleary. Um. I'm interested in the thought on this. So I was having a look earlier. Most of them are going to Moses. I actually don't mind the trade, but for those who who, who are bringing him in, just be aware of your numbers for round 14 because you've got Manly, um, Eels and Knights on the bye. Um, what's your thoughts on this? They've, they've got the Warriors this week, but then they've got Broncos and the Roosters, and then he's off for Origin. He may miss some games in between. Um, your thoughts on trade? I, I, I'm never getting rid of the goat in my team. He's staying in my team forever. Um, just because you know you're gonna want him back, and what he he's sitting at a what 885k. You go to Moses. You know what? He might get some money. Um, come back again, and it, you have to get Cleary back. And that's just mm. no, and to me, trading to Moses. You know what? You might get a few good weeks. Great, good on you. But Moses can pull out a 13, 15 quite easily. Um. You're never going to get that from Cleary. Cleary had a bad game last week and got 44 points. So, yeah. 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 I had this discussion offline with Dave earlier, uh, one of the guys from off the bench. And, you know, I said to him that, you know, Moses is one of those blokes. You can get your 13, I can get your 130. He doesn't have a base. Um, and he's not like a Dylan Brown. Dylan Brown can have a bad game, as we know, and he can pump out a 50. So, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I got I got Gutho and uh, Moses in one of my drafts. So Gutho, Moses, and another player. I it was Campbell Graham. So I had a massive score in my draft last week. I it's a ten man team, right? So I know I had nine hundred and fifty points in which in a ten man team, and um, I've gone. I've got the highest score of the week so far. And I've also got the lowest score of the week in a round so far because having that Moses factor really does hurt. I'll tell you right now. We got a we got a guy in one of our leagues. He's a power supporter, 
And he had Moses captain. He had Hopgood. He had Gutho. He had uh, Dylan Brown. Oh, brutal. Like, he, he, he scored 1,400 points or something or close to it. And he only had like 17 or 16 players too. I'm just like, this is just nuts. Like, you, you, you know, you were screwed for around 14, but he probably yeah. doesn't care. Yeah, that's um, it. Number four on the list is Taruva. I think, I think he's a move on now. Um, yeah, he's, he's, not, not, he's, not he's, any, he's not getting any ball either. Um, we thought it was good that Targo was out, but now he's got Peachy there that doesn't pass either. Yeah, uh, number, think yep. he's, he's, he's break even 43. He's projecting to get 41. If he gets that, like he might be lucky. Um, so yeah, he's peaked. Yeah, number five on the list is Josh Huster. Um, what do you say about him? I mean, what's going to happen with him when he comes back? Is he all this stuff around the hype about what happened with the training with the fight and everything else? Um, I personally don't think he's fit at the moment. I think that if he does come back into that team, he won't be starting five eights. He'll be on the bench, and he's mm-hmm. going to become an eighty nightmare. Oh, honestly, I I reckon the guy's got some demons. Oh, he's having a rough trot at the moment. I think he's got some demons, so I think he needs to get getting soft up here to um, yeah. get, get it sorted out. Uh, but then you got to think, who are you trading to? What you got two seventy one? So you're probably trading to Peachy. Yeah. Uh, that's probably all you really got as an option, which isn't the worst option. Don't get me wrong; that's probably a good option because you got about what uh, four to six weeks with Peachy playing center. Uh so people are using jewels and gun op- 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 Apu from the dogs. So four hundred twelve have gone Schuster to Olo Apu. There's a lot. Of, did he get? Did he get the name? In um, I didn't. I He's on the bench that. again. Yeah. So, uh, what would you rather go, Peachy? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't. Know. I wouldn't do the trade period. I'd just leave him there and see. Hope that he plays me on thirteen and makes up an extra number. That's exactly what I'm doing, mate. <laughs> After thirteen, he's gone. <laughs> so. <laughs> number six on the list is Sloan. This is interesting. Um, because he had a shocker last week. He got an eighteen, but we know what he can do when he's on. He's only got a break even at forty five. I'm not getting this trade. Plays round thirteen. Plays the Tigers this week. He could go big this week. Honestly, I'm looking at his scores. I, I I I had a choice to bring either Lomax or him in, and then I realised I couldn't bring Lomax in because um all my jewels had played. I held off too late, so I, mm. I, had, to, I had to choose Sloan. Um, but you look at his scores, so he's 78, 53, and that's and then he gets a against the Sharks who can defend. He gets a 15, very very bad, and then he gets 67 and a 15 against the Titans of all people. Then an 85 and then a 90 and an 18. So I think he's, he's due for a big score. He's due score. for a big one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, he, and he's playing the Tigers. So. I, hope not. I hope I did not. <laughs> yeah. um, another one on the, uh, is uh, number seven on this is Isaiah Katoa from the Dolphins. Um, again, I'm not sure on this one either. I mean, 358K, he's still making money, um, plays round 13. I'm happy to hold him at the moment. Um, and He'll play the 13 for me. And, you know, if he makes me enough cash, I'll bugger him off later. Yeah. I've got him there. He's not hurting me. He's not losing money. Uh, I don't need to play him. I didn't even need to play him last week when the numbers were short. So um, I, I took an AE and I wasn't even him. So I, it was Dunster's AE that I got. So I'm keeping him for a fresh body that at any moment could actually go off. So I, I got these vibes of Ilias from him. Yeah. And Ilias was that guy that everyone was bad because he never got points. And now you see Ilias every now and then smash out a ton or close to a ton. So I think um Katoa, I'm happy to just let him sit there. Um uh, I'll probably trade Katoa out and hopefully move Manu to five eight later on when he gets his duel. Yeah. Um uh, but I don't need to worry about rushing that in. So he was dead set boarded last week. He was on sixty five and he downgraded to forty. They took a try assist that he should have had on kept and a line break assist off him as well. Yeah. Yep. All right. Number eight in the list is Greg Marzu. Um, another one. I know he's on the buy, but I would not be selling him. Um, I would be hanging on to him for around thirteen number. I'm not sure who everyone's trading him to. Um, I haven't had a look at that yet. But your thoughts on that one? Well, I don't know. He, he, has he peaked? He could be could have peaked by now. He's uh got a buy round. It's a lot of money to have on the bench for a buy round. That's the only thing I can think of why people are trading him out. Break so, even of eighty eight, so he's going to lose some cash. Yeah. Um, he won't lose cash this week, but I think it's the no. fact that they got how much is he like seven hundred thousand something ridiculous? Well, six fifty. Okay, yeah. So that that that's a lot of money to have on your bench for this week. But you have, I think we all knew there was a buy every single week this year. You had to have some kind of succession plan. Like I said, I had Harry Grant in the bench last week. Like that's a lot of money to have right there. Yeah. So um, 
I think we have to I'll, I'll hold him, um, especially as a really, really solid and potential captain choice in round 13. Number nine list is William Warbrick. I think he's done his job. He's made double his cash now. Um, I think it's a good trade out depending on who you go to. I mean, 400k, this, you can probably do something with that. So, you mm. know, I think it's a good trade. Yeah, he was one of the guys I'm looking at trading out um, and cashing. I'm um, looking probably to go up actually rather than go down. So, um, I will talk about it later. I'm looking at trading in uh, potentially Gutho and I need to make a bit of a few adjustments to get Gutho in. But, um, I needed probably about another what sixty thousand um to get that trade, which shouldn't be a challenge. But I, I love the Warbrick trade out. Yep, number number ten on the list um is um is Val Holmes. I, th- I think it's time to trade him out. I think Origin coming up on that too. I think he's done his job. I th- he'll he'll be one that I traded out a couple of weeks ago, um which I regret doing when I did. Um, but I I think after Origin he could be a good pickup if he's mm-hmm. hopefully he drops in price. Be nice and cheap. Yeah, I, I'm holding him until the last minute because yeah. um, he's not – he had a, what, a couple of bad scores every now and then, but most of them are pretty good. So I'll, I'm going to keep him until last minute, until origin, and then I'll spend that money on the right player who's playing around 13. Yeah. Number – okay, we'll go to trading. We'll just run through these quickly. Number one on the list is Dream Boomer. Um, 10,000 are on him this week, which is a fair chunk of numbers. Obviously, good cash downgrade, but doesn't play 13. Yeah, it all depends on who you're trading from. Like, if you say trading out turbo to him, I don't like it. I think it's a bit, um, to be a bit too down. It's, it's pretty down. But if you're trading, say, I don't know a war brick to him, um, using jewels, then yeah, go for it. I, the one that I saw today that I wasn't keen on was well, I know it banks a fair whack of cash, like five hundred and k, but Walsh to Buller. That's yeah. That's a pretty. That's pretty crazy. I'd rather yeah. try and get someone a bit more solid. Yeah, number two on the list is Gutho. I think we all agree he's a good trading this week. Um, I've jumped on him last week, which I'm pretty happy about. Yeah, and their draw isn't too bad either. Um, we've got Gold Coast this week. There's, oh, it's not the worst draw, and I think uh, in the one of the chats they were saying that they're used to picking up Gutho for about five hundred k around this time of the year because this is an origin. He's the guy you want to have our origin. Yeah. Um. But he's what six fifty when he last week when you bought him I think wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he went up. Um, he went up fifty sixty k or something last yeah. week. Yeah. So he's but, definitely um, expensive, but he's doing. He's showing. He's had a much better season this year. Yeah, he um he was unlucky not to get five tries there last week. I think there was one where <laughs> Pena didn't pass to him while he was wide open, and there was another one. I think Sibo bombed bombed one as, as well that should have gone to him, but um yeah, can't be greedy. I guess. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, yes, we can. <laughs> Number three on the list is Dylan Brown. Your thoughts on this one? Um, he's, um, as I said earlier, he's got a really good base um, and he got pumped out 100 on the weekend. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I want to own Brown and Moses just for the fact that they take, seem to take points off each other as well. Yeah, uh, unless they're playing like they did last week where they put on a big score, like almost 50 mm. points. Um, it's very rare they both score massive points. Um but if I had to choose one, I'm always going to choose. I, I traded in Dylan Brown last week, um, and very good decision to make. But um, I think he's the safer option out of both. Um, but as you, as you saw, you look at what um, I think Brown uh, Moses has the higher ceiling and break. Um, but yeah, I feel safer with Brown. So it's only twenty k difference. I just noticed now too. I thought Moses was a lot more expensive than that. Mm. You know, I, I said, like I said, um, I, I will contradict myself a few times. I, I hate that whole trading a gun out, but I traded out months there to get to um Dylan Brown. And Didn't I even notice that, you did that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like that was a smart move because um, it's not a, a big downward move. It's it's close to sideways, but getting those extra points makes it an upwards move over Origin. Mm. Um, if I went Harry Grant to say. Uh, JMK, I feel that's a very downward move to get those extra points, but it's a bit of a downwards move. So I was that's why I, was, I had that choice. Who do I keep, Grant or Munster? And I chose to go with um keep keep Grant. Yeah, number four on the list. I wish I had kept this bloke. I mean, if we had known he was going to go back to starting against Jermaine Hopgood, um, he did go up a bit last week. He's five seventy seven k, still a good price. Um, mm. what's your thoughts on trading him in? Mate, it is so up and down with that um, that roster at the moment. Like they've got like Cartwright was 
starting and now he's not. Now they've got um Davey in there starting and now Maddo on the bench. Maddo on the bench. And I, um that's one thing I was gonna ask you about actually, Maddo on the bench. Do you reckon it's gonna be very similar to last year when he had that first twenty off and then comes on and does sixty straight? Yeah, I'm interested to because I was actually looking to trade in Hotwood this week, but I'm not I'm not gonna do it. But that's what I'm worried about with Hot with Maddo on the bench. Like what's the rotation gonna be like? There's like you'd have to think that there's no way Hopgood plays eighty with Maddo on the bench. I mean, I, does does Davy play eighty or does Maddo come on and go on to an edge? I I I, I don't know. That's that's why I wouldn't be trading Hopgood in this week. It's just the unknown. Um, you, got to, you got to think as well. Cartwright is very versatile. Where he can be an edge player, he could probably play a lock really really well as well if he wanted to. So you've yeah. got you got three locks on the bench, one on the field. Like it, it is too much of a, a schmozzle to really know. Who to get? I have got Maddo right now, and I'm playing him because I'm hoping he happens the same as last year when he he was smashing out 60 minutes and getting like 80 points. Yeah. All right. Number next on the list is Mitchell Moses. I think we've already spoken about him enough already. Yeah. Uh, next on the list is Nico Hines. Um, Jesus, but people are paying nearly a million dollars for him now. So um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, um, I mean, you've got to have him. It's just plain and simple. Should have had him yeah. already. Um. Actually, I noticed earlier that a lot, some of those people who don't have um, Hines are actually trading out Cleary to go to Hines, which is interesting. If you're going to trade Cleary out because you want it, you're you scared of that big break even, he's got Origin and that stuff as well. Um, you got to think Hines is playing Origin as well. Yeah. Um, for one. But if Hines wasn't playing Origin, that's the only person I would trade Cleary to. Mm. Number seven on the list is Corey Horsburgh. What's your thoughts on this one? I mean, he's playing consistent minutes at the moment, got the dual position, 544K. I was having a look at him last week, but um, opted to go with Gaffo instead because it was either upgrade the front row or the, or the um, fullback. What's your thoughts on this one? Um, I just don't trust Ricky with his ro- rotations. No, I've never really trusted Ricky with the rotation, but I've always loved Big Red. Um, always so he, everyone always bags him out being angry, but I reckon he's probably one of the most genuinely nice guys on the, off the field. He just shows mm. his passion on the field. Um, but I've always loved what he does, SC wise, uh, super coach wise, with points. He just never got those minutes. So if his minutes are consistent, and you can, you can, even though Ricky's unpredictable, you can still see patterns and trends by looking at the minutes he's been getting. Uh, and you can start to kind of predict that. I don't mind this trading because everyone's going to go Tarpany. Everyone's going to go, um, I got AFB last week. So yeah. uh, a bit different. Horse, a bit, bit cheaper. Um, and he's playing that buy round. I, I don't mind it at all. Yeah, I was actually looking at potentially bringing in Jay, um, Jack DeBellum this week until I saw he was named at prop. And I'm just like, yeah. Nah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> nah. he's, 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 Jack, Jack DeBellum, if he's at lock, he's definitely a guy that can score 60 on average quite easily. So. I just think the blokes like Horsburgh, um, even AFB, have got more upside, more attacking stats. You know, I, don't think, Jay, I don't think DeBellin's got that in him, in his game. So no. I think he's a safe 50 to 60 every week, but he's not a upside of an 80 or 100. Yeah, that's true. All right, number eight on the list is dead set. I don't understand, which is Max B guy. I mean, he's played one game, and if Flamax comes back into that team, I'd say he's Probably the one that's going to go. So I'm not understanding this trade in. That's true. I, honestly, I've I'll, I'll been wanting this guy to play for ages because I see the team list with every every round one of every single NRL season. I always see, bang, like, oh, is it the cheaper one? No, nah, it's not. No, it's the cheaper one this time. It's just he's only played one game. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, when you got to think about the normal rules of Super Coach, we've got to, it, it's, it's not smart to, um, Get a guy on his first or after his first game. You want to wait that that one before his pay rise. The job security isn't there, and like you know what, you're trying to get him for the buy round, and you know what, he probably won't play the buy round. He's probably going to be like, there's no way they're paying Lomax that much money to play in reserve grade for more than two weeks. Yeah. Number nine on the list is Joe Croak. I think we've already spoken enough about him. Number yeah. ten on the list is uh, definitely chasing points, and that's Connolly Lemu. Thoughts on that one? Uh, if you're getting him in centre wing, I don't mind it. Um, but I think it's a bit late. I think he was a nice, good price uh, quite a while ago. Um, people are seeing the big score last week and going, yeah, I have to have him in my team. But he's going to be like the same as what, say, a and Aiken was last year, playing yeah. second row. Um, but And I wouldn't I wouldn't have spent that much money on Ewan Aiken either. I think he's a bit too much for what he's going to give you output. He had a pretty good score last week on him, but 
Uh, I think it's a bit late for Lemu Lemu. Well, he went up 75k last week and he's gone up nearly 300k in total. He does have a break even of minus 22, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could make that he, trade myself. He's definitely a safe number for the yeah. buy round, but that's, yeah, like there's other options out there. You've got Jack Bird, for example, who I probably much prefer, um, but he's a bit, bit more expensive as well. But I think I prefer someone like Jack Bird. No, well, that's the, that's all that um, team list and uh, trade trends done for this round. Um, anything else you wanted to speak about quickly, Dan, before we finish up? No, nah, mate, all good. I think we've, we've said everything. And you guys have got your pod tomorrow night, yet? Yeah? yeah, we'll get it up tomorrow night. So we'll probably get it um, recorded around 7, 7.30, and then we'll um, get it up probably about 9.30. All right, well, I just appreciate your time. Thanks for jumping on, Dan. Um, it's a pleasure having you on, as always. So uh, thank you, and... Um, just to remind you guys, so the pod this week, um, with the game there being a 6.30 game on Sunday night, we'll probably then, I think we'll do the pod on Monday night, I'd say next round, mm. um, by the time the game finishes and everything. Um, so um, I'll be off next week because I'm up at Magic Round, so if anyone's up there and they want to catch up for a beer, send me a message, send Brad a message, we'll both be up there. And um, until then, we'll catch you um, next week. Sounds good, mate. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks, everyone. Bye.